Hello, my friend, Sarah Gaston here. Welcome to another edition of Facebook Live. And you know it's truly live because I'm actually coming live from Mr. Pixel's Classic Arcade, or Arcade as I like to say, because I'm, I'm fancy. Anyway, uh, today, first of all, I always welcome your questions. And uh, as we've said before here, your mileage may vary. So when I speak with you, I'm always speaking from my opinion based on my experiences in this business. So if you had a different experience, well, good on you. Anyway, um, thank you so much today. As always, I am going to take your questions live. Please just put your questions in the comment box, but I like to have a little topic that I speak to uh, at the very top of our sessions, just to sort of get things going. Hello, Christina. So, so glad you could join us. I don't know why I'm doing a pool British accent all of a sudden. Anyway, so today I want to take a little bit of time to talk about the top 10 mistakes actors make according to the illustrious, the one and only DJ Jazzy Jackson, as I like to call her, Dolores Jackson Esquire, casting director extraordinaire. Uh, anyway, she came up with this list um, a few years ago for the Screen Actors Guild. They wanted to publish some, um, some things on their website about uh, things, actors, things actors shouldn't be doing that they do uh, when they're auditioning. So she came up with this fantastic list and I chatted with her earlier today and she gave me some updates. So um, it's actually going to be more than 10. So lucky bonus for all of you chaps. Um, oh, thank you, Christina. Um, yeah, that interview was, was, a, was a lot of fun, so thank you for that acknowledgement. I really appreciate that. Okay, so um, I'm going to actually share with you what Dolores said, and I'll probably tell you some anecdotal uh, uh, examples on top of it. So the first thing that she has is in her list, being unavailable or not responding to your agent in a timely manner. So this is something that happens a lot. I think actors sometimes think that um, casting is waiting until the last possible moment to release information to the talent and then demanding that the talent respond right away. But I can tell you from actually having worked on both sides of the table that that's not the case. The casting directors are waiting on the information from the client and they get it to the agents as soon as they can and then the agents get to you as soon as they can, all right? Nobody is sitting there plotting to give you as little time as possible to prepare. But what that means is you have to be available and you have to be able to check your email and check your texts and you have to be able to uh, check in with your agent in case you do get an opportunity all right and if you're not available then book out right which basically means you reach out to your agent and say hey i'm going to tahiti for a month you know to uh you know, live off mangoes or whatever right but let your agent know um because you know a lot of times with these auditions there's a very quick turnaround time and if you drag your feet you know, maybe there's another actor who could do it who has lost that opportunity. So respond to your agents in a timely manner, my friends, being late, being late for the audition. Now, we're in a pandemic situation right now, so there's not a lot of live auditioning. A lot of it's being done virtually right now. Same thing applies, be on time. And I wanna really clarify what being on time means. Being on time, if your audition time is one o'clock, does not mean strolling into the waiting room at one o'clock, okay? It means you are checked in, ready to go, you have all the information you need on what's happening in the audition, you've received any updates on the script, you've received any instructions on any improv you're gonna be doing in the room, you are ready to walk in the actual audition room at one o'clock, right? Which means get to the audition early. Same thing if you're doing it virtually. We all know by now, okay, that Zoom and WebEx and Google Hangouts and all these different platforms have technical hangups. Um, I have a laptop that inexplicably likes to just reboot, okay? You have to prepare for that in advance so that you are ready to go at your designated audition time. Because if they're seeing 150 actors and you know every other actor is strolling in 15 minutes late, that means they have to work a much longer day. That means the client is waiting to see more talent tapes get uploaded. It's just, it's uncool and it's unprofessional. Don't do it. Joseph Jones, hello my friend, thank you for joining us. Okay, not bringing your headshot and resume. Here's this fantasy that actors have. You think that because you've uploaded it to a database or because your agent has it, 
that we all have magically have access to it. That's simply not the case. There are still times, especially in a callback situation, when you need a good old fashioned three dimensional hand this over to me headshot and resume, particularly when the client or the director or the um, ad agency folks, whoever is trying to decide, particularly in a commercial situation, when they're trying to decide groupings and final casting, they want to be able to like lay all the headshots out on the floor or you know tape them all to a wall and see who looks good together and who works as a family group or who works as a group of friends and you know do we have the level of diversity and range that we need there are all these sorts of factors that go into the final decision if you do not have a physical resume to hand them there's going to be a little stick figure with red hair you know and that's supposed to be me right so um keep an updated resume staple to an updated headshot in the trunk of your car in fact keep five at all times because you just never ever know when you're going to be asked for it um we, we just still need them y'all we just do and you know the other thing is actors will sometimes say oh well my agent has one well your agent's not here your agent having one is not the same as you having one in the room i can't say it another way i'll stop now okay great don't lie don't lie there are so many ways this can manifest itself first of all you can conflate your credits you can conflate your training. You know, sometimes people will take a two hour workshop with somebody and say, I studied with so and so. You didn't study with them. You took a two hour workshop, they talked, you listened, right? Workshops are great, workshops are important, but be honest that you took a workshop. Because let me tell you this I've seen actors that had zero credits and then they said they had this much training, right? So if I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, wow, you've taken 15 classes and you've never booked you are bad, you're a bad actor, okay? And it's really not the case, it's just that they have conflated what they have actually done, right? So if you take an acting class with somebody and you cover 10 things, you don't list 10 different acting classes, right? You say, I took scene study with Sarah Gaston, you know, and then that's it, you know? Or you say, I took a Meissner class with Kim Tobin, that's it. I took audition class with, you know, Deke Anderson, right? So don't conflate your training, don't conflate your, your credits, um, don't lie about um, skills that you have that you don't, don't lie about, um, don't lie with your headshot, right? Don't put up headshots that uh, skew what you actually look like, right? You know, especially men sometimes um, don't want people to know they're balding and so they'll have an older headshot where they have all this hair and then they walk into the room and there's no hair and that's a problem or ladies change their hair color or you know you've, you've photoshopped yourself so much that you look 20 years younger and 30 pounds thinner <laughs> just it's not you know we're not taking pictures for a fashion magazine you know it's a headshot so you need to look like the picture you know when you walk into the room okay uh, don't be rude I mean, that kind of goes without saying, hello, Zulima, thank you for joining us. Um, don't be rude. Uh, and that, that covers a lot of things. Um, you know, we used to say that the audition starts in the parking lot because you literally know, never know who you're gonna run into in the parking lot. Um, I was on my way to an audition that was in a three-story building one time, and I ended up riding up in the elevator with everybody who was gonna be in the callback room. And I had no idea. It was this group of guys, it was the ad agency, it was the client, it was the director for the commercial, you know, and I made friendly chit chat, you know, but, um, you know, what if I'd had a bad day and, you know, they didn't hold the elevator and I was like, screw you. And then I go upstairs and all of a sudden they're in the callback room, you know, that would be super awkward. Right. So, um, so just be cool to everyone. Uh, it, you know, casting days are long and they're very, very stressful. And, you know, nobody's trying to um, screw you over. Nobody's trying to make you late, you know, to get back to work or to go pick up your child. Sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes things run behind. Sometimes the casting director is waiting to hear back from the client or, um, you know, the director, you know, to see if they need to change the direction that they're running the casting in. And so um, just know that and, and just have grace. Just have grace. Um, don't make excuses. I mean, that covers so many different things, you know, don't make excuses for being late. Don't make excuses for not being prepared. Don't make excuses for not having your materials. Um, you're, if you don't have it, you don't have it, but that's on you. You have control over that. 
and if if it doesn't if you're you're not prepared in whatever capacity and take responsibility for it uh, let's see not keeping your training current this is a big one um, you know this industry changes quite a bit um, in particular with commercials um, styles change quite a bit um, you know with television shows especially we have so many genres and subgenres and you know it, it used to be sort of nighttime drama or three camera sitcom now there are you know 25 shades in between and you really need to understand the nuances of the different types of work you're going to be approaching and because you took one class five years ago doesn't mean you're current with what's going on in the industry now and the audition room is not the place to teach you how to do this stuff right this is training you need to be doing on your own so get in a class um, playing the negative this really applies mostly to improv for commercials um, you always want to keep it positive because you're about to associate whatever is being said with the product right so if you you know walk into if you're if you're playing someone who um is you know shopping at target and you go oh you know what the thing about target is you know everything here is so cheap okay like first of all you don't even realize that you're saying cheap as in poor quality right so that's never a good thing or you're a couple and you know you're you're supposed to be shopping for a new toyota and you know you turn to your fake husband and you go well you know you know you never want the color of car I want, you know, this is why I'm filing for divorce. Like, why why do I want to buy a Toyota if I'm going to get a divorce, right? So you just have to think these things through. You're representing a product. So keep it positive. Hello, Rufus Tillman. Thank you for joining us. Okay. I know it seems like I'm kind of, uh, you know, kind of bulldogging through this, but I have a lot to cover. Not listening to direction and not being flexible. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. If you're interested, I have a video um, in my YouTube you know, stable called take the note, right? So here's the thing, the director or the casting director has an idea of what they want and they're gonna do their best to communicate that to you. And if they're not seeing what they want, they're gonna give you a note, right? The worst thing an actor can do is to argue or to not be able to implement the note or to not even try to implement the note. You don't know better, which is why you're not the director or the casting director, right? If it doesn't work, the casting director, the director is going to see that, right? So all you do is you say, okay, great, thank you. And you try the thing that they've asked you to do. And if it doesn't work, they'll know it, right? Now, alternatively, you can say, great, can I try something as well? All right, you can offer that. But please don't argue when you're given a note and please don't refuse to do it. And please, if you are unable to take notes, again, get in the class and learn how to be flexible and take direction. Hello, Charlotte. Nice to see you. Um, okay, let's see. Not being prepared, right? Um, <laughs> this is what Dolores said in her article. Of all the mistakes, this is the worst with the most offenders, right? So she's right, nothing can mask a lack of preparation. That's your job, right? And here's the thing, I understand, I am a working actor. There are times when we have a million things going on and it's hard to get off book. And you know, that suit is at the cleaners or you haven't done laundry and that's your favorite audition shirt or whatever, okay? But you can plan your life to ameliorate these challenges and to be prepared. And if you don't think you can do a good job, if you don't think you can be prepared, then turn down the audition, right? But don't show up uh, with something just sloppy and, and ill thought because that doesn't make the casting director look good. It doesn't make you look good. It looks like you don't care. It looks like this isn't your profession. It looks like you don't respect the time and money being put into this you know, project. It's just not good. It's it's like, it really is the equivalent of showing up to a job interview, because guess what, an audition is a job interview, and not having researched the company, not have any idea what the job is that you're trying to get, or, you know, um, why you're the right fit for the job, or, you know, not remembering the name of the person you're interviewing with. I mean, it really is, it is just like that. Hello, BJ. Hi, nice to see you, bud. So, 
Now, in addition to all that, are you exhausted? I know I am. Um, Dolores wanted me to share a couple of uh, other things that have to do with our current environment. So, as you may have noticed by now, we're in a pandemic, and so a lot of things has shifted. A lot of things have shifted around auditioning. Um, I know for me, I have not been in an audition room. I don't think in six months, but I've had a lot of auditions, which means I'm taping at home. And sometimes I'm taping by myself. Sometimes somebody in my pod will come over. Thank you, Joe, for Safi. Um, sometimes I will uh, have somebody on, you know, my tablet, like, you know, reading with me remotely, and they're off camera, you know, on my little tablet stand, and I'm playing the scene with them, and there's this real tinny, you know, sound coming through my tablet, right? It's far from ideal, y'all, but this is the world we live in. So a couple of things you need to be prepared to do. First of all, your online profile has got to be on point. That means updated headshots. That means updated resume, an updated reel if you have it. Um, do a virtual slate. That's something I always forget to do and I absolutely need to do it. Do a virtual slate. Have all your online materials uploaded and ready to go, okay? know how to self tape right um or you know book a session with me and i'll i'll help you through it right but you got to be able to self tape and you got we got to be able to see you we got to be able to hear you um it's it's got to look good right otherwise you're not going to get sent up the line okay um you've got to uh know how to audition virtually now hopefully you guys saw the email that came through a few weeks ago on actors access and all went through the tutorial on how to do ecocast live okay which is a new virtual uh, casting platform so it's a it's basically like a zoom audition but it's it's something that uh, it's a platform that's been set up by actors access okay but the thing is you've got to be familiar with these platforms you've got to make sure your lighting is good you've got to make sure you have a non-busy background you've got to make sure your sound is good um you know i i'm working with all my students virtually right now so uh, i have people um, on zoom either doing private lessons or classes and let me tell you the quality of sound and lighting varies greatly and that's all your that's all you have to give to that casting director or director, right? So it is your responsibility. It's unfortunate that it's our responsibility. I've not enjoyed becoming a tech person over the past six months, right? But it's just where we are right now, guys. You gotta figure out how to do it. And if you don't know, find somebody who can teach you. Um, but you gotta make sure your sound is good. You gotta make sure your sound is, is consistent. You gotta make sure you've got high speed internet and that the signal is stable. You have to make sure that your lighting is good. You don't want to be backlit. You don't want to be some sort of crazy silhouette. All these things are so important. Otherwise, um, it's just, it looks so poor. And you got to allow enough time to know that you're going to be up and you're going to be ready to go when, uh, your, when your audition is, when your audition time comes. Whew! I'm so poshed after saying all those things. Let's see, I think that is, oh yeah. And the bottom line is, if you're not comfortable with these things, practice, practice, practice. Um, I just had a meeting yesterday with a guy to get me set up on uh, WebEx, you know, which is another platform, and that's after learning how to do Skype and Zoom, right? But don't wait until you've got that virtual audition to run around and try to figure out how to do it or rely on your agent or rely on the casting director to help you figure out how to do it, right? Practice Zoom auditions with your friends. You know, have work with them and have them tell you, like, no, your lighting is no good. You know, let's talk about getting you a ring light or, you know, we can get you a pop-up background or let's go get a sheet from Target and hang it up behind you and iron it. Or, um, you know, I have a whole video on, on taping at home. And those same principles apply to doing a Zoom at home, okay, or any sort of audition at home. Hello, Craig Davey. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, let's see. I think, golly, guys, I think that is it. Joe, is there anything I'm leaving out? No. I have a side No, my today. queen. <laughs> uh, do we have any questions, Joe? I do not see any. Joseph Jones actually asked, is it great to get to an audition 10 or 15 minutes early to prepare? Yes. Joseph Jones, it is great to get to an audition 10 to 15 minutes early and get prepared. Absolutely, because first of all, you've got to check in. 
Second of all, you might get uh, put with a family group or a friend group. You may, may be given a new script. You may be given um, some sort of paperwork to fill out. You know, maybe they, for some reason, they need paper size sheets that day. You just don't ever know. So yes, yeah, try to show up 15 minutes early to get prepared. Um, you know, I've certainly gone in and been given new sides or gone, you know, gone in and like, hey, we, we decided we're gonna do something slightly different. So now we are doing this improv, right? Where I walk in and I realize, you know, I'm in a different segment altogether and I don't know the name of, how to pronounce the name of the company or whatever. So there are so many variables. So yeah, you just wanna go in a little early so you can set yourself up for success. So guys, I'm waiting on your questions. And as always, I believe our time is our most valuable and non-renewable resource. So I will not take up more of your time if you guys do not have questions. And as always, if you think of a question outside of you know our, our Wednesday meet and greets, you are welcome to put it in the comments below. After I sign off, I'll catch it next week in my Facebook Live. Or you can always message me, people text me, people Facebook message me in the middle of the night, people send me smoke signals on a clear day and you know ask their questions that way. And I promise I'll save them and address them the following week. So if we don't have any further questions, I'm going to wrap up very slowly and with this odd accent. I like to talk like Miranda Hart. My queen. Uh, thank you. Mike yes. Fleming says hello. Hello, Mike Fleming! Thank you so much, Mike, for joining us. Rest in peace, truly. Um, okay, so uh, I will be putting this on my YouTube channel. You can always catch the replay. It's gonna stay on my, on my uh, Facebook page here. I have a plethora of YouTube videos covering various topics about the art and business of acting. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check all those out. Here's the bonus about subscribing to my YouTube channel is I don't always announce when they drop. Sometimes I just add on new content, but if you're subscribed, you will be alerted every time I drop a new video. And trust me, they're all priceless with, with invaluable content that will enlighten you, entertain you, and uh, make your life in general better. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can subscribe to my email list. It's www.saragaston.com. It's backwards. No, it's still backwards. No, it's upside down. You'll be fine. <laughs> okay. www.saragaston.com. No H. So, here's the thing. If you subscribe to my email list, um, you're going to get all sorts of information that I don't share anywhere else. Um, updates on the industry, current practices, things you can be on the lookout for. If an audition comes my way, if somebody needs help with a project, um, I will send it out to my students so they'll have a chance to apply and hopefully get some experience, maybe a little uh, footage for their demo reel. Anyway, um, so I do share those things to support my email community and my students and my clients, both current and former. So thank you so much, my friends, and as always, stay safe and break a leg out there. Bye.